Cheaper controllers like this Flysky i6s here are tempting to people who are just entering the hobby. But I've heard rumors that they are laggy, which may lead to all sorts of problems. Today we're gonna find out if these rumors are true, and how exactly does a Flysky compare to a well-established Tyrannus. I'm Mark from Drone Lab, and this is the transmission delay of a Flysky radio measured and compared to a Tyrannus. For this experiment, we've opened up a Flysky i6s, as well as a Tyrannus X9D. And in each of the radios, we hooked up this fancy logic analyzer directly to the inputs of the device, that is, to the wires of the switches and gimbals. We've also connected the same logic analyzer to the output of the receiver of that radio. This way we can record at the same time what's happening in the transmitter and the receiver and therefore we can measure how long does it take for the receiver to react to our flipping of a switch. Let's start with the Tyrannus as a benchmark. On this recording, the bottom trace represents me flipping the switch up and down. And if we zoom in onto the top, we can see the individual update packets that the receiver sends to the flight controller. We can zoom in even further and see the individual bytes. We can immediately notice that the receiver is updating at regular intervals of 111 Hz. But this isn't the number we're looking for. If we decode these packets and look at the channel that's being toggled, we may notice that the very first packet after the flipping of the switch doesn't yet contain the correct data. It takes some time for the event to be transmitted and for the output to correctly reflect the position of the switch. Let's call this stick to output signal delay. In this case here, it's 20 and a half milliseconds or slightly longer than a single frame of video. After taking 16 more measurement points, I've gotten an average for the Tyrannus of 22.96 milliseconds. 22.96, write that down. We ran another test with a gimbal where the signal is proportional. We can see the analog waveform recorded directly from the throttle lever and the staircase-shaped decoded digital output signal. Each step here represents a new updated packet and we get 111 of them per second. You can see how the values of the steps lag behind the curve of the direct analog readout from the gimbal, because the red curve of the decoded data looks the same like the blue curve of the analog data, but it's moved slightly to the right, or later in time. Now on to the Flysky i6s. The same setup was created and the data was collected in the same way. Here we can additionally see the waveform of the PPM signal, but that one is slow and we shouldn't care about it. Just like last time, the signal is decoded so we can easily analyze the value of the one channel that we're flipping. I had to program these decoder plugins myself as neither iBus nor SBus was available, but I've uploaded the source code to GitHub in case you have the same tools and you want to recreate this experiment. Link in the description below. First we can notice that the Flysky updates a little more frequently at 130Hz, but that doesn't matter that much. Now onto the actual lag measurements. Just like last time, we take the moment the switch is flipped up until the moment that the output has the correct value. 16 data points were measured and I've gotten these interesting results. On average, while the Tyrannus took 22.96 milliseconds to update, the Flysky took only 15.1 millisecond. That's significantly faster. In fact, the Flysky is on average faster than the best sample I recorded in the Tyrannus. It gets even more interesting when we look at the gimbal data. The decoded signal follows the original one very tightly, and when we zoom in on a single slope and try to compare it to the Tyrannus, the difference is staggering. Let me reiterate that the closer the blue and red plots are, the better, and the Flysky is just much tighter. Both plots are on the same time scale of 5 milliseconds per division, and I rechecked the data three times. Honestly, I'm just as surprised as you are, but the Flysky simply performs better. But does this even matter? Well, there's been a lot of discussion about the delay of different FPV cameras, and the delay on the controller is just as significant. So, with these results in mind, are we supposed to just throw away our Tyrannuses and buy the cheaper Flysky radios instead? Well, no, not really. There are still valid reasons to prefer the more premium radio, like the much fancier gimbals, the expansion port, and the boy interface. The 7 millisecond latency difference isn't really that big. But what this does mean is that there's no reason to avoid the fly skies. They're not laggy, they work just fine, if not better, in this aspect. 
you can save some money getting one of these and spend it on other parts. To be honest, I am kind of disappointed with the latencies of both radios. It's kind of weird that you can play Counter-Strike on a server that's not even in the same country as you are and have less latency than when controlling a drone that's just above your head. I hope the makers of radio controllers will improve on this in the future. But in the meantime, I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.